This is your standard PS5 controller, and this is a standard arcade stick. But there's a new controller on the block, it's the Hori Fighting Commander Octa. And this controller looks at the traditional arcade stick and says, anything you can do, I can do better, but also smaller, more portably, and it almost fits in your pocket. So, is it true? Is this new Hori Fighting Commander Octa with its special analog stick with octagonal gate going to be a replacement for your arcade stick? Well, it's definitely my new preferred pad when I'm playing on a pad controller for fighting games, but it is in many ways still a Gen 1 product, and I'm going to try and explain a few reasons why this may or may not be the controller for you. First, let's talk about what this controller is. It's an officially licensed PS5 pad controller, but unlike the DualSense or the DualShock that came before it, there's only one analog stick. Now, the main reason for that is to make space on the face of the controller for six action buttons instead of the usual four. And this is what makes it a bit more useful as a fighting game controller. Now, if you're familiar with arcade sticks, you'll know that usually it has six to eight buttons here on the front of the controller, and that's what makes it easier to play fighting games because you can press multiple buttons at the same time, and sometimes weird combinations in weird shapes where you need like two or three buttons pressed at the same time that are not like right next to each other. If you want to do the same thing on a traditional pad controller, you normally have to get your hand in a weird contorted claw position or you set macros so that you press one button and it presses a combination of buttons for you in the software. Now since you have access to the R1 and R2 buttons on the face of the pad now, there's space on the top of the controller for the L1 and the L2 buttons. Now although it may not be super helpful to have L1 and L2 on the shoulder buttons when you're using a hand over technique to press the button, buttons, it is really useful to have access to eight total action buttons completely with your right hand if you're using a traditional grip like this, which means that your left hand is now completely free to focus on only one thing, and that's movement. So you're pressing on the D-pad with your thumb or using the new Okta analog stick. I suppose if you're using this hand over grip, you can actually reach the shoulder buttons like this, but it's not super ideal. Now that the L1 and L2 buttons have been shifted, the remaining space on the left side is dedicated to the L3 and R3 buttons, which you'd normally have to click an analog stick to press. We'll talk about the D-pad in a moment, but the analog stick is actually where this pad gets its name, the Okta. Unlike most pad controllers, this analog stick has an octagonal gate built into it, which makes it a little bit easier to know which direction you've actually pressed when you're pushing all the way against the edges of the analog stick. This is actually how most arcade sticks work, because even though you can't see it, there's usually an octagonal or square-shaped gate underneath the arcade stick, and that makes it easier for things like circular motions. You can use it for things like guiding your hand around in a quarter circle or a half circle motion, but also if you've got a square gate, it just makes it really easy to lock your hand in place while blocking and then slide quickly over for sonic booms or flash kicks. I suppose it could be useful in 3D games like platformers or FPS games as well, but with this controller only having one analog stick, you're probably not gonna be using it for that anyway. Now over to the D-pad. The original fighting commander for the PS4 had one of the better D-pads and this new Fighting Commander Okta is, in many ways, an improvement on that. Instead of the old plus-shaped design, the Okta uses a circular disc with a concave plus-shaped disc on top. I'll explain why that's important later, but for now, just know that this D-pad has a pivot in the middle, which is the bare minimum for a good D-pad. If it didn't, then you'd run the risk of pressing all the directions at once and having to waste time lifting off the D-pad before you can actuate any further inputs. Now it's time for Yoop or No. Does it work on PS5? Yoop and PS4 too. Does it work on Xbox? Nope, you're gonna have to buy the Xbox version for that. Does it work on PC? Yup. In fact, you'll need a PC to edit the four profiles for things like button remapping and changing the D-pad sensitivity. Is it heavy? Nope, there's no vibration motor or battery inside this controller, so it weighs practically nothing. Speaking of batteries, is it wireless? Nope, you're gonna have to deal with this traditional cable, which is USB-A on one side and hardwired into the controller on the other. Does it have a headphone jack? Yup. Is the analog stick clicky? Yup. And nope. I mean, it's an analog stick, but it does have an octagonal gate and you do feel the click stops as you go around it. Are the action buttons clicky? Yup. But only these six action buttons on the front. These normal shoulder buttons on the top are just standard membrane buttons. Is it officially licensed? Yup. Is the D-pad clicky? Nope. Does the touchpad work? Yup. Can you press the touchpad on the sides to change your position in training mode? Yup, and nope. It works perfectly in Street Fighter V in PS4 mode on a PS4, but on PS5, the touchpad just doesn't respond at all, probably because SF5 is a PS4 game. 
Can you use the touchpad like a mouse in MMOs? Seriously, guys, it's a fighting game controller. All right, that's enough talking about this controller. It's time to do a deep dive on the Hori Fighting Commander Okta and see how it actually performs in some fighting games. If you go over to a game which is normally PS5 controllers only, you can see I don't get any error messages. Usually an error message will pop up if you use a controller which isn't supported. All right, now in Street Fighter here, let's just talk about generally how it feels to play with this controller. The first thing is that yes, it does look and it's shaped like a standard controller. So you can play it with your hands on here like this. If you're not super confident about using this hand over style, you can just use it like a standard controller and then you still have access to all the buttons that you normally would. But one of the main benefits of having six face buttons is that you've also got these buttons here on the top, which means now you have access to eight buttons with only your right hand, and that could be really convenient. Now, what's also really convenient about having eight buttons here on the right side is that you now have access to the L3 and R3 buttons over here. Now, in Street Fighter, you can't assign these to attacks, and actually, I think in most fighting games, you can't assign L3 or R3 to attacks, but in a game like Street Fighter, you can use things like L3 to reset the stage. Honestly, it feels pretty good to use in the hand when you're using a standard handheld grip like this. I will say the only thing about the controller overall feel-wise is that it is very, very light. So if you're just holding it like this in the two-hand grip position, this is actually not really an issue. It would be much nicer if it were heavier. But when you're playing it with hand-over version like this, you don't really have the controller locked in place and even if you want to like push it up against your leg it's not really very easy to do and it does kind of slide around the solutions i've come up for this are to rest it on your right leg like this to jam it into your leg like this or to actually use your thumb and your pinky to hold the controller in place while you're pressing these buttons like this and the second thing is i would like an option where this controller was kind of more flat on the right side it's like they've gone for this six face button style but they've still left this handle here. So if you're doing the hand over style, it doesn't really balance on your leg very well. The original Fighting Commander, they had a pro version, which is a little bit more flat and it didn't really have this handle here. That controller was better designed for people who were actually going to leave it on their leg. Honestly, it's very uncommon for a pad controller to have clicky buttons, so it feels very luxurious indeed. But the thing about clicky buttons is that even if you have it on an arcade stick, Usually there's quite a bit of travel to the button. You can't really see it from here, but there's very, very little travel. It's basically, there's no travel before the click begins and then it clicks in. So it doesn't feel like the few millimeters of travel that you get on a Sanwa button from an arcade stick. This kind of clickiness is a lot closer to something you'd expect from a laptop chiclet style keyboard, which is really strange at first, but you do get used to it. Weirdly, my opinion is actually that it doesn't need clicky buttons. I, I, it's kind of nice when you open it out the box and you're like, whoa, my pad controller has clicky buttons. But honestly, I feel like clickiness fe actually belongs on the left side where the D-pad is. When you're like hitting buttons from high up or just, you know, from you're putting, you know, quite a lot of force into pressing these buttons, it's kind of unsatisfying to not have a lot of travel. But one thing I will say about that is actually that because there isn't very much travel, it kind of encourages you to press these buttons more lightly. And in a way, that means you're going to be more efficient energy-wise. One more cool benefit of having six face buttons on the front of your pad is that you can now use your shortcuts using a single finger. So when you go over to do something like a throw, you just smack it with your index finger like this. And when you want to do a V skill, I just use my middle finger, press both, and then I can do my V skill like this. And when you want to do your V trigger, you can just smack R1 and R2, again, with just a single finger like this. Also, one thing you might be interested to know if you're using a controller like this is that you can also slide your fingers over the buttons. So if you're playing a game like Vampire Savior, where you need to press like a bunch of different inputs within like a five frame window, so you can like tech hit and you can see how fast the inputs can come in. One thing I will say about the buttons is that it actually feels nicer when you're using it hand over. But when you have your hand like this, it just doesn't feel quite as nice. It just, I feel like I want to push the button further in to actuate it. Also, as a side note, if you don't like the fact that it's got six face buttons and actually you just want to use these four buttons as your face button, you can actually go into the software on your PC and you can remap these buttons so that cross, you know, cross and square just don't do anything at all. All right, it's the part you've all been waiting for. We're actually going to talk about the main event, the D-pad and the analog stick on this controller, because this is what really set it apart from all the other pad controllers out there, because most other makers are not making pad controllers 
for fighting games. Now you may remember that I actually already reviewed a version of this controller, the one for the Xbox. This time for the PS5 version of the controller, I've really spent a long time testing it before making this video. And I've actually reached a number of different conclusions. I still stand by all my opinions that I had in the previous video on the Xbox version, but something I did notice is that it kind of hurts my finger to use the D-pad, or at least at the start it did. Now, if you have a look at the D-pad itself, you can see it's actually got quite a hard plastic. It's not hard like it hurts, but it is hard plastic as opposed to the slightly softer, gummier feel of D-pads on things like the previous Fighting Commander. It's not that it's soft plastic, but it does feel softer to press just because of the shape of it. And as a result, when you're playing fighting games like I do and you're using the tip of your finger, it actually kind of starts to dig into the fleshy part of your thumb after you're using it for a while. And one of the main things I discovered this time when using this controller is that actually this isn't really how you're supposed to use this D-pad. This D-pad really wants you to place your thumb not here, but here in the middle of the D-pad. I now don't have to move my finger around the D-pad and keep changing my position frequently because, for example, as you can see, when I want to dash forward, I'm tapping on the right part of the D-pad, but then when I want to go left, I start tapping on the left part of the D-pad and you can see my thumb is completely off the D-pad. I actually find that it's much easier for me to use this controller if I put my thumb right in the middle. I can just rock it to the left when I want to go to the left and I can just rock it to the right when I want to go right and I just rock in a circle like this. But there's actually one more thing that's really helpful now that I'm putting my thumb in the middle of the D-pad and I want to change the game so I can actually show you specifically why. All right, fans of this channel will know this game very well. It's called Undernight Inbirth. Now, the reason I've chosen this particular combo is because there's one point when I have to do down down twice and then right after that I need to do a quarter circle motion this way and as you can see if I use the tip of my thumb it's actually quite painful especially on this d-pad it's because if I go down down twice like this and then I want to rock into a quarter circle motion like this I actually like slide my thumb along the edge of this controller and <laughs> you can probably you can probably feel how painful it is to do that I recommend that you actually shift your thumb over to the middle of the pad and then you do what I was doing previously in Street Fighter and as a result there's no pain caused because all you're really doing is pushing down on all the different parts of the d-pad as opposed to sliding your finger along the edges of it. Let me show you what this combo actually looks like. So that was me using the tip of my thumb and as you saw after I do the down down input I have to either reset my thumb so I can do a nice quarter circle motion or I just slide my thumb from that down position to the right position so I like slide across the quarter circle motion and it just really hurt my thumb and honestly I could barely do it to demonstrate it for this video. Now I'm going to show you the same input but with my thumb in the middle of the d-pad. Much easier. I go knuckle knuckle and then just roll across and it's just so much easier. Something people were saying in the comments when I reviewed the Xbox version of the controller is that they found it really difficult to get diagonals. But as you can see, I have absolutely no issue hitting any of the diagonals on this controller. But that's specifically because this has the newest firmware. The last thing I'm going to say about the D-pad is that when you get it out the box, it is a little bit stiff and you do need to work it in. So it takes probably, I don't know, two or three hours of play before it finally feels like it's been properly, you know, loosened up. Not all of you are going to be using the D-pad on this controller. Many of you are buying it for the flagship feature, which is this. It is the analog stick with the octagonal gate. And as you can see, I can use it just like an analog stick. You can push it to this side. However, when you actually get into doing some combos with this, a number of things do crop up that are, in my opinion, a little bit concerning and probably kind of shows that this is a Gen 1 design and that really needs to be kind of finely tuned. And the main thing I want to talk about is the diagonals on here. The angle from notch to notch going around here is exactly the same all the way around. And as a result, it actually kind of makes it a little more difficult to hit the diagonals on this controller. Now, as you can see from my inputs here, the diagonal is coming out when I'm holding it like this. But something I noticed is that with this controller, when I do a quarter circle, Sometimes I don't actually get the quarter circle, I'll get this. If you have a look at my inputs here, you can see it goes from down to back instead of going down, down, back, back. Now that's not to say it's impossible to get quarter circles to come out on this controller. It's just that you have to make a very concerted effort to push into the diagonal when you do it. This is just a normal arcade stick where you've got the ball and lever here at the top. But then when you open it up and look on the inside, you can actually see that rotating it around is activating 
four separate switches. Normally arcade sticks have a restrictor gate just like the Octa, but because they've got switches, it would be really difficult to go from down to back and not actually pass through pressing both switches at the same time. And that's where the analog stick on the Octa sort of falls short. Unfortunately, it is capable of going through a diagonal portion of the lever, but actually skipping the diagonal portion. That being said, if you are the type of player that always rides the gate for all your motions, and you make big exaggerated motions like this, then you probably won't have a problem. <laughs> At the very end of that combo, right before I dropped it, I actually tried to do a quarter circle back. But all you see here in the input is a down and a back. And the reason it's happening here is because I'm doing two quarter circles in a row. When you do a quarter circle and then a quarter circle, sometimes the second quarter circle is a little bit faster. And understandably, when you're moving very quickly, instead of going all the way around the edges, sometimes you just go straight from down to back. But you do pass through the diagonal portion of the analog stick. There's one more reason why I'm not super keen on using an analog stick for fighting games, and it's because this motion here, can you see my thumb is doing this lateral left and right motion. Have you ever tried to move your thumb sideways really fast? Watch the video and do this with me now. Go right, 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 right with your thumb. It's like nearly impossible. If you move your thumb off the analog stick onto the corner of it, you can kind of press down and rotate your thumb like this, but then you've moved your thumb off the middle of the analog stick to the edge, and now you're not ready for the next motion that you might need to do. A long story short, if you use an analog stick to play fighting games, you're a degenerate and you do not have my pity. A few final things about the analog stick, it does click in, which means that you've got L3 by clicking in on the analog stick, which means that in its default configuration, you have two L3 buttons up here and down here. I don't know if that's tournament legal. And the last thing I want to say is that the range of motion feels very different to a DualSense controller. The DualSense analog stick is quite a bit bigger and the circumference is bigger too. On the Hori Octa, it's got much less in the way of circumference and just the surface of the analog stick is quite a bit smaller too. All right, the very last thing I want to show you is the software that you can use to edit the functions of this controller and it's actually really useful so you have to have a PC in order to do this I don't think you can load up the editing software on a PlayStation you can actually edit the button mapping and the d-pad settings click over here and I go over to the left stick click I can change it from left stick to right stick click. I can also go in here and change the directions to be buttons, which is absolutely ridiculous. You can have it completely inactive if you want, or you can set like up to be R3, or you can set up to be down. <laughs> and something I have shown, I think in previous videos is that you can have as many of the same button that you want. So instead of these buttons being L3, I can have this be circle above it. I can have circle. The other thing you can change in the settings is the D-pad sensitivity. So if I press this button over here, and I set this over to a lower setting like so, then now you can see it's like quite easy to press the up right position, but pressing the up left position, if I push really, really hard on the D-pad, it does come out, but if I push very lightly, it just doesn't come out at all. But what's frustrating about this is that I don't really need this for the D-pad. The only reason I would need a sensitivity adjustment feature is to change the analog stick, which actually has problems getting the diagonals to come out more easily. Last couple of things about the controller. You've got a tournament lock switch. If you put it all the way over here, then you know the touchpad won't do anything and the PS home button won't do anything and these buttons on the side won't do anything. All right, one thing that we absolutely have to try using this analog stick with an octagonal gate like an arcade stick is to actually try using this controller like an arcade stick. That's a little bit harder than I was expecting. And the main reason is that I would often miss the diagonal. Listen up, that's all I've got time for today. This has been a really fun controller to get to know over the past couple of months, but it's been such a difficult video to make because I actually covered this controller a year ago and coming back to it, it's been like a love-hate relationship. The first time I went back to it, I was just like, wait, what did I actually like about this controller? I can't use this D-pad at all. I can't use this analog stick at all. And then I really spent weeks and weeks trying to figure out how to make the most out of it. And now I'm like, actually, maybe it's my favorite pad controller because of the way it kind of forces you to leave your thumb in the middle of the stick. You can use the tip of your thumb, but I do feel like the reason you would want to go for this controller is if you are the type of pad player that leaves your thumb in the middle of the pad, 
or if you are interested in experimenting with using the analog stick a little bit like you might use a traditional arcade stick. Another reason why I'm really happy that this controller exists is that there's just not that many companies out there making fighting game pad controllers, you know, controllers designed specifically for people who want to play fighting games, people who need six buttons on the front of the controller, people who need a good D-pad that isn't just like the garbage that they throw on most of the third-party controllers these days. So my honest opinion on this controller is that some days I love it and sometimes I absolutely hate it. I just like lose the knack. It, it could also help that I don't predominantly play on a pad controller. I usually play on a stick controller or an all-button controller. But going back to D-pad, I'm just like, okay, how do I actually get consistent with my combos using this D-pad? And in a way, I tried going back to the previous Fighting Commander and also just a DualShock controller. I was just like, you know what? It's actually kind of hard to go back and using the tip of my thumb, using those split D-pad controllers, using this sort of conjoined circle pad, which is concave, so your thumb fits in it. And ideally, you just don't lift your finger off the D-pad at all. It does seem to work really well, but there are days when I just hate this thing, and other days when I'm like, this is it, I love this thing. So if you're gonna pick up this pad for fighting games, I really recommend that you keep as open a mind as possible. One more thing I should probably point out about this controller is that $60 is an awkward price range. Usually online you'll find it for $50, but the retail price is $60, and that makes it a little bit cheaper than an official controller, but not as expensive as a pro controller, and it is definitely not a pro controller. It's too light, it's got very plastically construction. I've heard a lot of people talk about the shoulder buttons kind of breaking quite quickly over time, so I'm like, this is obviously not going to hold up as like a main tournament controller unless you buy like maybe three or four of them and you have them in your bag ready to go and you also break in the D-pads on all of them because this is another thing that's a problem for people who play on pad controllers. They just aren't resilient enough for tournament play. Not the way that arcade sticks are built with super hard parts that are built to be used, you know, in public spaces in arcades. This controller, like any other in its price range, it's quite plastically and I don't expect it to last very long. But functionally, it does have all the things that you'd want as a fighting gamer on a pad controller. Things like a good D-pad and six buttons here on the front of the controller and the ability to have eight action buttons accessible to you with only your right hand. And as a bonus, it does things that I haven't seen many other controllers do, things like having an octagonal gate around the analog stick, which I think I've only ever seen on the original GameCube controller, but that was for the C-stick, not for the main analog stick. So basically, those are my thoughts on the controller. I think it's the sort of thing that you're either going to love or you're going to hate and I think probably mostly because it's still kind of a Gen 1 product. I think that the octagonal gate on this analog stick isn't quite there. They need to tweak the angles that they've got on the gate around this analog stick. And also just things like making the controller heavier and feel more premium. I think what we really need is a pro version of the Octa, like a Hori Fighting Commander Octa Pro. So for example, maybe like 100 to $130, I wouldn't mind paying a price like that if you gave me a version of this controller, but with more sturdy shoulder buttons, heavier constructions, maybe make it wireless as an option, improve the gate on the analog stick, and maybe make the D-pad even bigger. Maybe give us the option to actually take these clicky switches out and replace them with non-clicky switches or buttons that actually have a bit more travel to them. This design, the Hori Octa, has a lot of potential, and I'm really hoping that Hori doesn't just end the series with this one. I'm hoping that they go further and either make an Octa version 2 or a Pro version of this controller. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Be sure to comment below if you've used this controller before or even the Xbox version before and you've got differing opinions to mine. If you've not used the controller before, be sure to leave a comment and you can ask any questions that you may have. I'll definitely do my best to answer all of the questions that I can. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That's all I've got for today. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.